healthy. This is not what we want, man. Cut it off. Bahama Soul Club, uh, featuring master percussionist Kojato, who used to perform very regularly with Fela Anikulapo Kuti. And this is titled Afro Shigida. This is from the Bahama Soul Club's 2010 album, Bossa Nova Just Smells Funky. <laughs> You know, I love titles like that, and uh, they are meant to be fun, and they're meant to uh, get you to move your body, and nobody does it better than Cojato. This is Lead Stories. I'm Utrice Lead. It is Free Your Mind Friday. That means whatever it is you've been walking around with in your head that you need to release into the ether This is the forum for it. It's open to you and to everyone else. There's no theme, no specific subject that you must speak on. You choose your own topic and you tell us why you are on the air and what you're going to share with us. And uh, you try to keep it as, as tight as possible. So you don't take us on a scenic tour, but you do take us along with you into what is swimming in your head. This is the best way, I think, to get people together. We're just talking. It's something that we we haven't been accustomed to in all these years, just people just talking about things that are important and sharing what is important to them. And maybe in that way, you build community. You never know. Sometimes you think, well, am I the only one thinking this? Until you you talk it out, you won't know. So we'll start now with Clara from Philadelphia. Hello, Clara. What's on your mind? Are you there, Clara? I wanted to talk about refer to the issue of the vaccines that you discussed yesterday? Yes. I wanted to say all of your, all three uh, topics were very interesting and important, but, you know, I'm beginning to think that this is the most important issue we're facing, and it's not discussed very often in the, never really realistically or truthfully in the media. And when I talk with other people about Most of them don't even know the issue, don't even recognize it. But I'm saying that yesterday you posed the issue as one of individual rights versus community rights. 
And that's the way it's phrased. That's the way it's posed in the media and by those people oh, who are in favor. Community I'm rights sorry. versus state rights. State rights. Or okay. Individual Similar, rights but not the same. State yes. Rights. Oh, that's even more. Yes. Well, I think that that's their way. They want us to think that way. There's one issue, as I, as I can see, it's the issue of human rights. Because once you lose dominion over your own body, it seems to me there's not much more you can lose. If you can't decide what's going to happen to your own body and what goes into your body, that's, it's like being a slave. Number two, I still don't understand, nor do I accept, I don't accept the uh, explanations for this, why a person who's vaccinated, a person who believes that they have been immune, immunized by the vaccine, cares whether I am vaccinated. I don't get it. If I, if I, were, if I wanted to be vaccinated, and I felt I was, I was safe because that's the only reason I would be vaccinated. I wouldn't care what the person across the street or the person who lived in my house did. And maybe other people can explain this to me in a way that makes sense. But once you say, okay, once the state says they're going to come into your house and vaccinate you against your will, that's the end, as I see it. All right, I appreciate that point of view. Uh, But here's what I posed. What is the best resolution? You have a measles uh, outbreak occurring first in Brooklyn, in four specific communities in Brooklyn. And the very next day, I reported to you that the state is saying that communities way north of Brooklyn, Rockland County, are now uh, showing the effects of widespread contamination, which means it is spreading, at least if we trust what the city is saying. The city's medical experts are saying this disease is on the move, and Facing this rapid move of a disease, what is the best uh, solution? How do you protect the rest of the city? And how do you safeguard people at the same time who do not want to be part of a vaccination program? What, What is the happy medium here? Or is there one at all? Well, Yatrice, I heard about the outbreak in Rockland at least two weeks ago. That's a separate thing. They were threatening to go in there and force those people to be vaccinated more than two weeks ago. This this issue, this uh, out, so-called outbreak in uh, Brooklyn, is something new. They're not necessarily related to each other. That's one thing. The other thing is. So many law, too many lies have been told by the medical experts. The, the, let me tell you, as you probably know from listening to Gary, the science shows that number one, the vaccines aren't that effective, and number two, the idea of, um, and they're very dangerous. When I was a child, everybody got measles. And you just stayed home for a few days or maybe, I don't know how long it was. Since my father was in the military, they they would put a sign on your door. But other than that, you just stayed home until you got over the measles. So this this so-called epidemic, I think, is a specious argument. And I don't even believe, they don't go by the science. They go by what they want you to, to, to think. They won't even okay, think. But scientists. let me ask you: What if it is not? What if it's not? Uh, uh, you know, a lie. What if it is? There is some truth to it that measles. There's an outbreak of measles. It is spreading. What if it is true? Well, I don't. Well, 
Being measles is not a, a, a life-threatening disease. It's a childhood yes, it, it illness. Could be, it could be. Since it's uh, an immune a disease that attacks the immune system, in some well, cases no. people have died from it. Well, let's see. Let's see. It's a disease that you get in childhood. I got it when it. I was a child. And you I got older. measles when I was a child. Yeah. I'm saying that's but what I'm happened. saying. Here we are in 2019. And the question being raised is, we are told of a development that is not the best news we've received in a long time that people are coming down with this disease in numbers that are concerning to health authorities. Are and now it, it's, an, it, it's concerned, I mean, it's spreading from one group in Brooklyn to another group. Uh, they, they, they do interact with each other. So oh, these people, are, they probably visit one another. Isn't it, the same, isn't it a group of Orthodox Jewish people? Yes. The same, uh, yeah. Well, they probably visit one another. And that's how people get, uh, right. are, you know, so. Whether they visit or they <laughs> don't visit, the fact is they've, they've put this disease as being on the move. It is spreading. Who do you mean? The, the and state and the other thing that. they have the in state. common is sorry, excuse they me. refuse to be vaccinated or have their children vaccinated. Okay. Well, they, that's their right. I, and it should I, I'm be asking right. to. I'm asking you to. To tell you uh, the solution. Think, to to, okay. to think of a way that the city, the authorities of the city, and that's their charge to respond appropriately to something like this, which will okay. then okay. constitute, if it grows anymore, to be a major health concern. What is the oh. city to do? What do you think is the best solution at this point, as this disease I, okay. appears to be spreading? Okay. I believe that they should institute a policy the same policy they instituted when I was a child. You stay, maybe, maybe put a sign on the door so people will know. And then the people who are who have the disease stay home until it's uh-huh. it's resolved. That's and you don't destroy the rights of everyone. See, this is what I'm saying. Once you do that, they can come. They'll say, "Okay, time to get this." I refuse I, I agree to allow with, anyone to vaccinate me it, against my will. I see where you're going with that argument, and it's a very valid argument. People ought to be concerned. Uh, what next will be said to be the power of the state? And, and who keeps the state in check from encroaching on what you believe, and I believe, and others believe to be our rights? So this is where the rubber meets the road. How do you protect the larger society uh, from a disease that is said to be spreading? And how do you preserve people's concerns about vaccines and they don't want to be part of it? What is the happy medium here? And that's the question I've been asking. Okay. How do you protect the rights of the American people from this kind of assault. Once you allow this, it's, it's, let me tell you, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of a fascist agenda. We don't know anything about what they're telling. They're just spelling out words, this and that. Where are the figures? Where where is the proof that uh, this, 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 this illness is actually spreading rapidly? We don't know. We just know some yeah. people in Rockland and some people in Brooklyn have the disease, have the illness. That's all we know. We don't see any figures. We don't have any anything. But we, I do know that if they're allowed to, to force medical care on people, it is very, it's extremely destructive to our lives and to the to the life life of this nation. We've got only a little. 
a little distance to go before we're totally fascist state. That will that that will put the nail in the coffin, as far as I'm concerned. Forcing All right. People to take Thank you. You got us started today, coffin. and I'll see how people react to what you have to say. Thanks, Clara, for contributing. Gwen from New York, you're on the air. Hi, uh, you trees. How afternoon. are you doing? It's a it's getting nicer up here. It's not completely freezing, but uh, it's getting nicer. Um, and I'm okay. Um, I want to piggyback on Clara's comments because I, I agree with her. Um, first, I, I think people should consider the source of the information because this, the sources of information are also giving, giving us a lot of propaganda about Venezuela, which is also untrue. So when I hear NPR have somebody come on the station and She's working at the mayor's office, and, you know, first, I, at least I backed them into a corner enough to, 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 that she had to admit there were no deaths from this. So for the last 17 years, there has been no deaths from measles, and any deaths that did happen were 107 were from t people that actually got the vaccine. And the reason why you want to get measles when you're a child is because what the vaccine does is it pushes it over until you get older. It just keeps pushing it off. But if you get it when you're a child, you're immune from it and you won't get it again. But if you push it over to when you get older, then it can be dangerous to get it as an adult. But still no, no deaths from it. So I'm very curious about why this is happening. The other thing uh, that, that I wanted to say that I'm really afraid of, because I already have one person in my family who is autistic. And although they say there's no evidence about these vaccines, um, if I had a kid today, I, there is no way in hell I would ever give them a vaccine. No way. I'm done with it, okay? I would take my chance because autism, no one, no one is giving any attention to the, to the epidemic. One in every 10 children in, in, in New Jersey, one in every 10 boys is born autistic in the state of New Jersey. That's an epidemic, and we never hear about it. So to me... We're talking about this epidemic of a disease that hasn't killed anybody. It's not Ebola. It's not cancer. You get spots all over you. You look funny. Your friends laugh at you. When I was little, I remember going to my friend Jeannie's house and her pulling up her shirt, and she had spots all over her, and we just laughed at it, you know. She got better. She was better in a week. Her mother said she couldn't come out, and she didn't come out. But the idea, uh, especially over a disease, which has not caused any deaths, that they're going to come into your house and start immunizing you or giving you fines of $2,000, I have a real problem with that. That really scares me, especially with the other, th the other things they're doing at the same time, like with G5. I happen to live in a building where I have all kinds of equipment over my head, and they just came in two weeks ago to start the G5. And as far as I understand, these two things are dovetailing each other. And I'm not sure, but it, uh, there was an argument made on PRN the other night how they, they're actually interacting. And I can't, um, I can't remember the exact source of the argument. But I think that uh, if I were a parent, I'd be, very, I'd be much more leery of the vaccines than I would of diseases like measles. It just, it, to okay, me, but you better you, you gotta bring me more than the, what you got. Could you address the question? How should the city, how should the city be dealing with this dilemma? And they other than not, saying, they well, should, they should, we they, will impose okay. fines and we might even, if warranted, put you in jail. Okay. I think the city should, should just not be dealing with it. And I'll tell you why I think they should not be dealing with it, because Today, you have thousands of people that are going to get allergies, and those allergies are going to turn into bronchitis, and that bronchitis is going to turn into pneumonia. And lots of people die of pneumonia all over this country because lots of people have, Im they have immune compromised immune systems. Many, many old people have it. My parents I have to be very careful of. So to me, this big uh, uh, stick act is, is something to – throw panic into people. It's scaring people, and I don't think that, that the city should make a big deal about it. I think if the city wants to deal with it in a logical point of view, they should say, look, if, if what, what we are asking you to do is if your kid has measles, please quarantine your child. Please don't send them out to school. Leave them inside, 
and and I wouldn't make any bigger deal out of it other other than the the way they do with the flu in the in the winter time when people have the flu in the winter time they ask them to stay home they ask them not to come out when there's snow we ask people don't hit the road and start driving the measles you know 250 cases out of nine million people. Let's put this in perspective. Nine million people live in this city, okay? So 250 is a pretty small amount. I'm pretty sure we have at least 250 people that have pneumonia right now, which could kill them. We have that many people do, that do have you other... Appreciate, Go ahead. Are you appreciating political reality? The job of the mayor, as he sees it, is on the line. He cannot right. and will not be allowing a charge of neglect to ruin well, he, his, his chances. What, what is the, okay, his so what's the neglect? If nobody has died, then where did he neglect anybody? Well, nobody if nobody's has died ended up yet. in the hospital, dead or, 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 or they can't move, where is he neglecting people? Because, you know, to me, Nutris, I take issue with this too, Mr. Mayor. You don't do one thing about autism. You couldn't give a rat's butt about it. I've never heard him talk about it. I've never heard anybody in the city council discuss it. And yet it's all over the city. And nobody cares about it. And the thing is, right now, we are graduating kids into you have armies of people that have autism, and there's no way of dealing with it. Nobody knows what to do. They, they turn into adults, and then we don't, we don't really have programs for them. We have the worst programs in the United States for autistic kids. Right, we have no way We're out. not discussing autism just at the moment. We discuss no, we're not, the but I'm comparing. I'm, I'm, I'm making the comparison. The city has, because declared. I want... the city has declared that there is reason to be concerned about contagion. Uh, the stay home. Disease you know, if, if, you're, if, you, if your kid, if your kid is sick, then on, stay home. On. The city has uh, first declared that it was spotted in Brooklyn and that it was verified in Brooklyn. Now they're saying mm -hmm. there is a new strain uh, uh, people who are f are afflicted in, Rock in Rockland County, which to the city means that the things are moving with this disease. Okay. And okay. now, you let's say okay. you are a political person. You 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 failing I to am. calculate. <laughs> uh, I am. I run. So, so right, I'm first say, of all, the Rockland County thing uh, happened first. That was first, and then Brooklyn, and now back to Rockland again. And when Rockland tried to make a big deal of it, and they tried to propagandize it, it went over like a lead balloon. It didn't happen. So then they came in the other door, the Brooklyn door. So now they're getting, they're getting a little traction because they've got it all over the media, and they've got everybody scared out of their mind. But the truth of the matter is people are panicked, but they don't even know why they're panicked. And there's no reason to panic, yeah, and I don't panic. think the mayor should Here's, do this I'm, stuff. I'm, what we're talking about is how politics works. People are panicked, and so the mayor has to be seen as being very proactive. You're talking about a lot of things resting on uh, uh, resolution of this matter. The city of New York is a major international city. Uh, mm -hmm. Measles uh, uh, is contracted between contact between people. Uh, you talk about subways and buses and transportation systems. All these things are in play. So I am asking, what is the, the best way to handle this matter so that we don't get uh, paranoia on the part of the mm -hmm. people and we do get a sensible approach to a problem that may just be beginning? How do we do that? Well, I would tell you that to me, uh, what I would do if I was the mayor is I would not put out this, I would not ring the alarm bells to frighten people. These are in two relatively isolated places. And I say they're isolated because Rockland County is not, is not that close to New York City. And the, the other place is a, is a, is a, a, sec, a, sector, a section of Brooklyn, which is pretty concentrated with people that basically stay in, amongst themselves in that community. So I think what we should do is, as a matter of fact, I'm thinking about asking Gary if we can do some kind of symposium here so that he can explain what's real and what's not real. Because I think that, that not enough people have enough uh, information. And when you hear the information, then it becomes much more clear and people tend to not panic. If I was in there, 
I would probably call Gary No, and I would ask him, can you come and do a symposium here with another person and discuss why, why people, the pros and cons and what this disease actually does? Because I think information is power. And what I see on TV is not information. What they do is they drag you right up to the line of panic. And then, and then they go to the next subject. So they don't say at the end, you know, they say the mayor is going to give you a $2,000 fine, uh, that 253 people have this. And then they don't tell you, well, but the thing is that nobody's died of measles in the last 17 years. So, you know, yeah, but, and but that we really think the, the best point, thing to do is. Though, Gwen, you're not addressing the point. <laughs> you expect the mayor of the city of New York, who has a health and hospitals administrator, who has a health care system to uh, basically set that system aside or whatever it is that they've said so far, go outside the box, get somebody to tell, the, quote, the truth about measles. You, you really expect this? Well, you know what? I, you know, look, the, I, I think I've, I have answered the question. I do. I understand what the question is. And I, and I don't expect the mayor to do anything because the mayor is really just a puppet of a lot of different factions. So I don't know. I don't expect it. Do I wish it? Do I wish it? Yes, I do wish it, but I do not expect it. No, I see the connection between him and, and, the, and the, the woman who's, you know, doing all this and, I, and the connections he has to the medical community. So once again, it's, it's not about the people of New York City or the people that you're governing. It's about your cronies up at the top and, you know, who's going to get what. So that's, that I understand. I understand that's politics. And I just tell, I'm just asking people to please stay calm. That you know, we're not talking. I mean, we're not talking about Ebola. We're not talking about something that will kill you. We're talking about something that most people have gotten. And from all, all logical aspects, people should want their children to get it so they don't get it again, and so nothing happens to them as an adult. I mean, I'm sorry, but it, it worked for us. We're still alive. My best friend Jeannie's still alive today. I'm still alive. Gary Knoll's still alive. So you I'm know, still what's alive. Wrong with what I'm, we were doing in the past. You're we're here. Discussing so. Intersection you you're here. between politics and policy. And where does it's, that it's leave the like average a... person? But thanks. Very spirited discussion. Thank you very much, Gwen. Thanks. Steve from California, you're on the air. What are you freeing your mind of today? Hi. Hi, you trees. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm a total anti-vaxxer, but I think I have the perfect answer to your question. And that is, if I were the mayor of New York, I would create a program that would give everyone a measles vaccine for free immediately. And it's kind of cynical in a way because it's the, it's the perfect study to just say, well, whether you believe in the, 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 uh, the vaccine's uh, you know, value, you can get one. And um, you could be protected if that's your belief. And then afterwards, we could see what the effect was on millions of New Yorkers being vac vaccinated. I think your other callers are making just the too much question, sense. Though, the question, though, Steve, is in your scenario that you're putting forth, forth now, you still have the question of who basically ends up having sovereignty over your body. Well, if he, he makes it voluntary, then you do have sovereignty over your body, and it's, it's, it's your choice. So the people who are just kind of fearful and conditioned to react in, in that way, uh, they have the freedom to get vaccinated for free. And the other people who don't believe in vaccines... They have the freedom to not be vaccinated. Hmm. So how does this solve a problem? You still end up where you started because this well, is how you started. There are many well, people in the city of New York who are vaccinated against measles and mumps and rubella. And there well, are I, many people who obviously are not. It's, it's yeah, not changed. It, it doesn't change the equation. Yeah, I, I, if I were mayor, I would just say um, that uh, if you really believe that vaccination will, will help you or your children, 
you are free to do that, and I am offering this program immediately for you to do that. And so he, even though he's under pressure by many groups, you know, you know, Big Pharma and and who knows who, uh, he can just cave into that pressure by giving freedom to people. So you think this is a workable plan? Yeah, it's perfect because um, it, it gives everyone the choice. And, um, and then afterwards, you can really gauge the effectiveness of what happened. All right. Well, let me throw this little uh, uh, bone at you. When you're talking about an epidemic, immediately you're talking about you run out of time in some cases. You're up against time. You, you don't have very much time to turn things around. So you have to take some immediate action. What was, would that immediate action be? Oh, well, just um, creating, creating a very you know, instant program of uh, having vaccination centers and saying that, well, if you're afraid that you or your children will get measles, uh, come on down and get your vaccine. And, um, you know, that's, that's giving people at least the freedom to say that, um, okay, uh, I'm fearful of whatever effects this disease might have, even though, as your other callers have stated, uh, it's pretty innocuous. Uh, but, uh, he can he can appear to be the answer to everyone's question and really gain political uh, power by just saying, "Here's what I'm setting things up so that you anyone can do whatever they want to do, and if you you can feel protected by coming down to my program." Now I totally disagree with the whole uh, existential question of vaccines, but uh, at least this is making the mayor uh, come out of this uh, with a, a lot of uh, credibility and power. Hmm. Well, at least you put it on the table for consideration, Moki. Thank you so much for calling in today. Awesome. Willie from Great Brooklyn, day. you're on the air. What are you um, freeing your me. mind of today? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Sister Utrecht, I I'm not going to listen to you anymore. Because when we, <laughs> we, I, we, I don't agree with you. Okay. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Because I, the, for, for me, I can't understand that. Because I don't agree with you. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not going to listen anymore. How do, how do we know you were listening? Anybody, I was, I was listening. And I listened to you simply to learn. Because of all the teachers, you're, you're one of the finest. And I'm not just saying that to say this. Listen, you trees. In my mind, this 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 thing with this vaccine gives me a break. This is it's Palestine all over. Genocide. Simple. Because these you're not dealing with the foolish people. They're not gonna we from from listening to Gary and learning from Gary, we know vaccine don't work. So you're not gonna va- vaccine these people. The people around them. Those are the people you're going to be vaccinated. Just like the West Nile virus, remember, it flew from the, the, Nile, the, Nile, the Nile Valley all over Europe and came into Brooklyn, Queens, and so they had to spray the, um, the, the, the virus. Remember that? Yes. I mean, give me a break. This, this is just a smoke screen. It's a land grab. Bar, um, Bar Park, there are many brown people in that community. We got to get rid of them. It's just genocide. Simple as that. Listen, I'm totally again, um, in disagreement with you. And I wish I know in, and it, um, it, it's not. But that sister, um, Sister Alien Omar, here they, they, yes. they go, they, same people. No, 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 no. What they're saying about that sister. Remember, this, the, 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 these are the same people. Just, just hold a second. Let's just identify who you're talking about. This is a congresswoman from 
uh, Minnesota. Yes. Missouri, I think. Sorry. Yes. Now, who, the attack is coming from who? And we know who, they, who, who these people are. If, if you yeah, but the it, issue is not who the attack is coming from. It would be inevitable that she'd be attacked. The question is why? Why provoke an attack? Why provoke it? When you don't have any way of defending yourself, why would you provoke an attack? Why would you say things you know will get people exercised? And why would you say things that are dead wrong? Why would you, why would you do this as a, a newly elected member of Congress? Why don't you just uh, lay low for a while until you get a, a handle of how Washington works? And while you build a constituency and take care of your business, why do you continue to, you know, have your mouth write a check that your butt can't cash? Okay, you chief. Remember, a couple of years ago, uh, um, when you were manager of WBI and Betsy Walsh? Yes. It was the same argument out Team attack, committee, committee, committee to eliminate media offense into African people. Even then, and all you were doing was telling this, um, speaking truth. That's all. And these are the same people telling this. It was a lie. No, 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 it's a whole different thing there. I don't believe it. It's a whole different thing there because what I had been revealing was a plan by a certain person and her cohorts to take over the station, not just the station, but the entire network. And I was absolutely devoted to making sure that that was not going to happen. Right, right. They had, but they had put some funding in place. They had plans to take all five stations over. These are the so-called progressives now. And that was their plan. And I said, over my dead body, it's not going to happen. Right. Right. And, and we, we a group of us, foiled it. Foiled that plan. And it was all based on a lie. Whose lie? So, uh, 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 Which lie was that? That, that, that you were trying to take over the station and it was a coup and all kinds, all kinds of stuff. It, 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 no, no, you no, have... no. The lie was that, in fact, the lie supported the people who were trying to take over the station. Uh, and that that was not happening, that I had made it up. I had made up this grotesque lie that people were trying to take over, at least one person in particular, was trying to organize the takeover, not only of the station, but the entire network, which was absolutely true. Absolutely true. They had all the pieces in place. But it, I saw to it that it didn't happen. And when I say I, not just me, That's you. You used to come down to the station practically every day during that because point. They were threatening to take your life, and I said, "Not over my dead body. I will go with you as long as they're I coming." I understand that. Me. I have never forgotten that. But we prevailed. We 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 succeeded in our mission to protect the station, and this is the irony: we saved the station, but. We still have evidence that they haven't given up. This is what they intend to do. They got lots of money uh, from all kinds of people, including George Soros. They were ready exactly. to take over the entire network. And there was a group of us. We said it will not happen. We will not permit it. And we had the support of the community, although initially. 
even groups like CMOTAP, which, by the way, I inspired the <laughs> formation of. They told me so. Uh, they had invited me to speak. I went out there. They were complaining about media. And I said, you know, enough of the complaints. What are you prepared to do? And they formed CMOTAP. And it has been very effective in uh, calling attention to the lack of coverage or the distorted coverage of African-American and Latino communities all over the city. So I'm very proud that I inspired the formation of that organization. But the, the, the truth of it for us at WBAI was that we absolutely refused to have people for their own selfish reasons, and they had meticulously drawn up plans of how they were going to take over all the stations within the Pacifica network and form an entirely new network which they would own and run, presumably as a nonprofit, but not really. If you look at the uh, financial accounts that they had to file. Well, you know, the, the assault on uh, Sister Om, um, Omar, um, yes. I want to hear nothing from you. Not you personally, from, from the so-called mainstream media, because I, I know you. I know you. I would think maybe, maybe it's too much heat, but we sh you should invite on your program, I think. I, I, here's the thing. I do not believe that people are entitled to automatic defense, especially I'm based sorry, on how they present themselves. I think they need, I think she needs to apologize for her conduct, which has been outrageous. But I was I, I, very, I, very happy when she was elected and Tlaib and all the, the members, the new members of Congress. And within a blink of an eye, you, you said, what do they have for breakfast? that is addling their brains. They're not thinking. Their conduct is atrocious and unacceptable. And then to operate in a way that suggests that they feel entitled to the defense from the community, I think just put that over the, 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 the wall. No, not at all. Every time this woman opened her mouth, it was to cause friction. It was to cause uh, disruption. And that meant that the work that should have been done and that still needs to be done gets set aside because now she's embroiled in a fight. Okay, you're embroiled in a fight. Why is it to be assumed that I am to be one of your soldiers? No, you're wrong. You're just wrong. You have no logic at all on your side. Not from the way you're conducting yourself. And but, and you seem not she seems not to care. Well, um let, let me say this. I totally disagree with you on this one. Because That's first okay. of all, I don't believe it. She, she's not, she can't be that stupid. I've seen, I've seen them do it over and over again. Tony Martin. I mean, every one of our leaders, great minds, they've been assaulted and attacked. That lies. The, the point I'm making is, I, personally, I'm capable of making a judgment about when uh -oh. a person is being stupid or when it's just a simple mistake. But this is the fourth time. This is her fourth time. Well, and she appears not to care about the consequences of her actions that not only uh, reflect poorly on her personally, 
but that is wreaking havoc for every single African American and Latino in Congress. That's what she doesn't care about. She does not care about the consequences of her actions. And that means that she's a dangerous person. She's a very dangerous I, I, person. Well, I do not question your judgment, but I don't accept it coming from these people. No, I just don't. <laughs> but I, I know you. I, 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 I get I, it. I, I get that. you don't. I, I know that. But you know, I've, I've said things all my life that people in, in the initial situation. They said, get out of here. Now you're talking yeah. crazy. That happened to me and, with you. And many years have to go by before they said, oh, my God, you said this 12 years ago. This is one of those moments. Okay. Oh, I, well, I, I, ha I, have no, I have no personal gripe against this lady. I, I want her to succeed. I know that. I want her to make a... Uh, make, uh, uh, incredible achievements in in her political career but so far she's not impressing me as a person who is taking anybody's advice and at the same time she has managed to create such dissension and so many distractions that are taking the focus away from true struggles that people have in the Congress uh, for issues that we have been trying to get solved for a long time, better educational services, health care, and so forth. I don't see why these things have to be subsumed by a personal agenda, which is what she has. She has a personal a point to prove, a personal gripe, which is okay. But do not decide on your own that you are entitled to railroad what is already in play simply to get or to arrogate to yourself uh, publicity and, and attention for yourself at the expense of what has been in play and what they're trying to achieve and can't get any uh, coverage for. They're, they're trying to do some very important things. It is, it is clear to me she does, uh, has not really talked to members of the Congressional Black Caucus. She does not intend to. She is not taking advice. She does not need advice. And so it's one major problem after the other that she creates. It's not anybody else creating any problems for her. She is creating the problems. And now, is it fair that people who are working on things, that they now have to be made accountable for her support? No. That's wrong. And we need, as the public, we need to practice a different kind of politics. If you're wrong, and yeah, but on the whole, you're okay. We, we could support you. But if you're wrong every time you open your mouth, what makes you believe that you are entitled to automatic and unanimous support? You, 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 you totally misread the situation. And we have to be very, very... Uh, consistent with that. We have to learn how to criticize. We have to learn. I warned her. I warned her that she's putting her life on the line for, for no reason. And the very next couple of days, we get some guy being arrested for threatening to put, quote, a bullet in her skull. Now, really, do we need this? No. But now people have to drop what they're doing to pay attention to her. No, this suggests a different kind of problem, but I'm not 
qualify to solve that kind of problem. It's like Donald Trump. Psychiatrists have been saying he is way off center. They're troubled by his conduct and his behavior. They've been saying it for a long time. I've been saying it for a long time. Nobody seems interested in tackling the question that the president of the United States is unfit. And, and it, the, there needs to be a professional determination and inquiry into that. So whatever it is they're waiting for, they're waiting for. But the one thing they can't say is that this was not brought to their attention. Yeah, um, so, yeah, um, the, the other day you spoke about Nip, Nipsey um, Hustle, and I really thought about that, and I made sure that I send it to everybody in my contact. My sister, this is the, the deception of the so-called media. Now, how could a brother like that doing the kind of work he's doing? And we knew nothing about him. It shows that. Well, there, there are all real. kinds of reasons. There are lots of people. There are scientists who have been in the vineyard for years. Look how long it took us to appreciate the fact that uh, George Washington Carver even existed, let alone what he did his contributions to, to science. We don't know. We, we had to be taught that. That information was not widely distributed. There are people who still don't know about George Washington Carver. This is a society we live in. We don't control a printing press. We weren't publishing books back then. We weren't doing mass communications back then. So some people knew, but the vast majority of people did not. This is life. Anyway, I'll let somebody get on. You have Thank you, Willie. Enjoy your week. Thank I, 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 I'm not, not going to see you anymore because we, we don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your weekend. I still love you, but I'm not going to see you anymore. I still That's love right. You. Bye -bye. I understand that logic. I, I got that message before. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mitch from Brooklyn, you're on the air. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just calling about the coming about the sister, the Muslim sister. Yes. I would follow her into battle any day, and I would Good. tell her to stay away from them black caucuses and Spanish caucuses because she might get infected with the same nonsense that they are. They've okay. got all of that power up there, and they did nothing. I was with a, I was at a. a, a, a a seminar once with this guy, Charlie Rangel, up here in Brooklyn. He'd been up there for 30 years, and he had a nerve to say, yes, I remember when rats was running through Harlem, and, you know, buildings were abandoned, but look at it now. It's, pr it's coming back, and I'm proud of it. You know, so I, I said, well, he was up there for 30 years, why didn't he do something about the rats running through the streets? Because Here's the proper question. No, did nothing Here to make me proud of. He was there for 30 years, you say, and why didn't he do so and so? Why didn't the community do something? Why didn't the community step forward and say, your time is up, you're out of here? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, well, that's that. the point I'm making. I, I, I don't place the, the onus on the politicians. Politicians will do whatever they feel they can get away with. Well, we look at Charles Sumer. Look what he's doing for the Jewish community. Look, look, another, what, you can other, say uh, what he's doing for the Jewish community. But now you need to ask the, the real question. I mean, he stands up and fight for them. You know, yes, he stands up and fight, but they, ours don't. They have 
uh, made a, a bond with him. What, what black community, what part of the black community has a checks and balances on Charles Schumer? You show uh, me. Yeah, okay. Well, well, that's okay. That's, I've said what I wanted to say, but she should stay away from them guys. She get infected with the Ebola or something, you know, so thank you. Well, it's, uh, thank you. Well, we shouldn't be so casual about it. It's a very serious matter. It no, has I'm to be serious with... too. Stay away from them guys. Go do what you can do, and she you want somebody to protect so you. Call community. me. She is not walking into Congress with a battalion of supporters. Yeah. She is not walking into Congress with a lot of experience. She is not walking into Congress with any kind of political protection. Yeah. Well, so okay. She... Well, thank you. Sense, thank you very much for calling, Mish. Uh, it you. means that when you start talking politics, you have to talk strategy. Yeah. And right. there's okay. a disconnect here. Get things done. Thank you. We need oxygenated blood badly. But at oh, the okay. same time, you can't shoot and kill something that has at least some use. You can't oh, kill that. Okay. But I look at it, she's saying what a lot of us think. You know, the black caucuses should have been I'm talking about. The time the, has come to think very differently. Yeah. Because nothing that we think is getting done. Yeah. So it must mean either something is wrong with what we think, or there is a reason that things are not getting done. Which, which is it? And I who mean, cares what I, we think? It's what we do. Okay. Well, I didn't hear any other black caucus people or Spanish caucus people or anybody else talking about what a racist person you know, it was. Nobody. They said nothing. But she got up and said, yeah, he's racist. He did this and he did that. What they right. all should have did. Right, but they didn't. And they no, have they didn't do nothing, but she did. Interesting reasons you know? for doing it. We give a lot of of uh, we give a lot of clout to things that, in the end, don't matter. What does it matter what you call a person? It matters, though, how you organize to get that person out of your way. But they wouldn't do that. Well, we've come to the end of our program today. Thanks so much. A lot of good thoughts uh, that should cause us all to rethink what we're thinking. And that's the beauty of the program. Have yourselves a great weekend. Surround yourselves with people who bring good things into your life. And we'll see each other Monday. Bye-bye.